Good evening, folks. In late 2018, when I first said the sun has a micronova event, I was met with a bit of ridicule. Most of the argument was that micronova events aren't even real. But I pointed to how the mainstream story of nova events had changed three to five times every year for about a decade, so they really didn't have anything solidly set in stone. Then came 2022, four years later. They discovered micronova events are real. Now the story changed to, okay, they're real, but the sun can't do them. Only a white dwarf star with a binary. My response was largely the same. They don't have a clue what they're talking about, especially since it was the only way to reconcile the evidence that we have on Earth from the sun. Then the tide began to turn even more. Dark supernova remnants were discovered and they kept being discovered. In this scenario, a binary wasn't necessary nor a white dwarf, just the accumulation of material, stuff dumped onto the star. These dark nova were from stars that wandered into dusty clouds and got the material dumped on them that way. This is important. In less than four years, we've gone from micronova aren't real to okay, they're real, but only in certain circumstances to okay, not just certain circumstances, but we assure you still, the sun can't do it. Wonder where we'll be next year. Now, I want us to re-watch the two critical videos on solar micronova. First, my battle with Harvard over nova isotopes stuck to dust. I won, by the way. And then the evidence that the sun does nova afterwards. One, two, punch coming. Hope you enjoy, and I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Here's the backstory. Dust-delivered isotopes from supernova are discovered on Earth. Scientists know that it must have been a relatively nearby nova after the formation of our solar system. They know this because the isotopes don't last that long. A long-ago nova likely seeded the sun and all the nearby stars, but that was too long ago for these isotopes. And if it was from far away, it would take too long for the dust to arrive at Earth. There has been a smoking gun piece of evidence to suggest that indeed a recurrent micronova from our sun is to blame, and now that concept comes under fire from a place that commands the ears and respect of the established academic world. Dr. Jonathan David Slavin from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics is publishing on the survivability of that dust and presence in the heliosphere, thereby facilitating the delivery to Earth. The paper suggests that a solid enough fraction of the dust from nearby Nova could have indeed been the Earth's source of those isotopes. This is actually the formalization of a conference submission made earlier in the year, wrapping up his findings now, and indeed he is considered a top expert on dust destruction by Nova shocks. Now, In this work, the conclusion to the direct question of whether that Nova dust could be transported to the Earth from somewhere other than the Sun is a yes. Let's look at the work and it will quickly become clear where the differences lie. First, they use the presumption that the grains exist within a pre-existing nova cavity, and indeed, that's not bad. That would be the local void or local bubble of that long-ago supernova that seeded our local stellar neighborhood today. They do say it is speculation and that those calculations have not been carried out, and we will come back to that. The core issue in this analysis is the presumption that magnetic fields are not important amidst the gas through which the dust is moving, and so Slavin decides not to model them. Now that should be a giant red flag, and indeed, in critiquing another work in the field, in this same paper, Slavin calls out the red flag of their ignoring magnetic fields in their model. But didn't you just… never mind, twin red rectangles blowing in the breeze there. But back to his speculation about the survival of the dust within the local bubble, which he says has not been properly calculated. Well, it has, just not in the parameter space of his model. It has, on the other hand, been modeled while not ignoring the magnetic fields. This team isn't exactly second rate. They hold positions at the Air Force Science Division, CERN, King's College London, and the University of Illinois. If you recall, publishing in arguably the most important astrophysics journal on the planet, showing that the magnetic fields are important in the restriction of those dust grains to the nova remnant and not their blasting out into space to seed the Earth, for example, which of course leaves only one possible source for those isotopes on Earth. Lastly, this new work by Slavin, while it will criticize a paper for ignoring what it ignores itself, it does not address or even cite the dusty magnetic pinball paper. Seems like that one should be addressed or at least mentioned. In addition to the isotopes, 
the rapid heat and then cooling scenario that brings massive deposition of ice, the cyclical reaction to the galactic electromagnetic environment, right down to the stories told in rock and on rock. This is the reality of living with a star. More information in the description box found by scrolling below the video player. We'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone. To accept the challenge to explain all the evidence of catastrophes on Earth is to come to know that we must look outside the Earth for their cause. To look at galactic astrophysics and astrophysical plasma, the conclusion delivers one right back to an event that can explain all of that evidence. The only explanation for all the evidence, the inevitable conclusion of the space science, a cyclical long period recurrent solar micronova, will begin out in space at the galactic level where the Parker plasma instability runs through the galactic disk. Scientists have understood the physics of this rippling current sheet for some time, its existence at the galactic and stellar level, and yet the implications for this plasma magnetic geometry within the galaxy is not well explored when it interacts with a star. The sheet itself is a bit of a challenging thing to get your head around, but it is indeed an electric double layer. This has been known to run with the Parker instability again for many years, including how they surround equatorial regions of spinning sphere magnets in space, and the magnetic fields run opposite directions above and below the double layer sheet. This lab and theoretical science has already been well studied at the solar system level. The magnetic fields of the sun drape to the current sheet and have opposite directions on the north versus southern hemispheres. Now, even while the solar wind emanates in all directions, those magnetic fields in one hemisphere of the sun do always come back, and those hemispheres flip every 11 years. So the best way to imagine this current sheet is to put yourself right in the middle of it, opposite fields on either side of the sheet, and invisibly populating the entire interior is a magnetically neutral, collisionless plasma, which is why astrospheres look like the Earth magnetic field being blown back by the solar wind. It's the same thing in the galaxy, but it's the galactic ion wind and galactic magnetic fields interacting. Since there are not CME-like structures in the galactic plane, the crossings of the galactic current sheet are pretty much all you get in terms of galactic space weather. We know from theory, lab work, and from observations of the solar wind plasma that these crossings include a density component. That's the magnetic flip in the solar wind in blue, and look at the spike straight line jump up in solar wind density below in orange. Now from 3 to 10 protons per cubic centimeter might not seem like much, but that's more than a tripling of the density. And at the galactic level, there's much more dust as well. This density component will not only be plasmic like in the solar wind, but will contain lots of gas and dust as well, swept up in the electromagnetic waveform. It is already well known that this is a nova trigger event. In fact, they believe many known nova and recurrent nova events are due to too much material getting into that star's atmosphere, blocking the vent, so to speak, causing a runaway explosive event from the plasma pressure and temperature within. But that's not all. Astronomers now largely recognize the plasma instability trigger for nova events. Any electromagnetic event at the sun could cause major solar wind enhancement or interruption, which could not only trigger an outburst outright, that would be the former situation, but if it interrupts it, the latter situation, material will build in the solar atmosphere, and we're right back to trigger number one. Both come with the electromagnetic current sheet of the galaxy, which we believe to cross the sun's path, every 10 to 15,000 years. Now since it's not only possible, plausible, but perhaps downright expected at stars and during the galactic current sheet, what does the other side of the evidence say about a solar micronova? Well, there are five core pieces of evidence that seem to be present almost every time we have this cycle on Earth. The first two are not difficult to explain with the solar micronova. Extinctions can flow from various types of events, and the shell release on our star could not only push meteors out of their orbits, but also the shell itself could have pieces congeal and coalesce into impactors. Where we begin to need the nova and see its ability to explain the cycle is the glaciation paradox. Ice is deposited fast, very fast, and to do this, you need to evaporate tons of water with heat or with more volatility if you use induced electricity, and then you need cold to freeze it. Well, the heat aspect of the micronova, not really hard to imagine. But then the evaporated water cloud albedo would do a good job cooling the planet. Then also, the primary production in nova events is dust, and that dust will act like a volcanic winter at the top of the atmosphere, not to mention it will likely be clouding the inner solar system too. 
Not hard to get a drop in temperature when you consider the leftover elements of the micronova either. There is no doubt that the magnetic reversal is where the micronova begins to separate itself. It's not just the Gothenburg magnetic excursion 12,000 years ago and the younger Dryas impactors seeming to line up in time, but that's the case at each of the magnetic excursion events every 10 to 15,000 years into the past. The impactors can't flip the Earth's field, but the micronova can do the impactors and the flipping. The application of a strong electric field can flip the polarity of an entire object within that electric field. This is basic physics, and now we're talking about the micronova electric field and charged particles, and the Earth is the object within it. In fact, this animation showing a concentric shockwave flipping Earth's fields in red comes from a university government partnership at NCAR. Finally, the nova isotopes, the ones impactors can't explain and which show up in microtectites and bone of the animals that fell during these events. How I put it in the June 29th morning news was about as good as I can put it. One of the few lines of evidence that leads us right back to a cyclical nova event at our star is that there are isotopes from these past events they try to peg on impactors, but there are also isotopes that are too extreme even for something like what they envision killed the dinosaurs. Those, they say, came from a very nearby nova event, sometime after our solar system formed. Now they come to that conclusion because these isotopes must have been formed in nova, but they have short half-lives, they wouldn't have survived from before our sun formed, and if it was from a far away star, it would take too long for the isotopes and dust its riding to get here. And again, the half-life problem. They have explained this using interstellar dust expelled by nova, not unlike the dusty plasma that falls to Earth to this day. Again, that article from yesterday. But this year, that theory ran into a major problem that plasma physics could have informed them of decades ago if they appreciated it, and it is that those grains of dust are not going to be delivered from anywhere except right here. They cannot escape the shockwave of the nova, and so delivery by some other star is not possible. It's got to be from within the heart of the event. Now this would imply that the ancient nova that preceded, seeded, and triggered the formation and or ignition of our sun was to blame since we are in its heart, but again, we run into the half-life problem in that those isotopes wouldn't be around today. And so we are left with but one explanation. Our star, like billions of others, is an ultra-long period recurrent micronova. It's bigger than a dwarf nova and the nova element of a type 1 x-ray burst, but still nowhere near a normal nova or supernova. Whether we start at galactic astrophysics, the long history of the catastrophe cycle, the geomagnetic evidence, or the isotopes we looked at today, the story is the same. And so, to review, with the astrophysics being what they are, this galactic sheet we are short across on a regular cycle brings two nova triggers to a solar wind outputting star. The only way to explain all the evidence of what happens to this planet on a cycle is the solar outburst, and there are three ways to get there from the geophysical evidence. So what else is there to know? Well indeed, the cycle is underway once again. Earth's field is reversing, and the timeline suggests that 80-90% to 90 of you watching this will live to see it. The other planets are all showing signs of magnetic changes, including Pluto, now enduring an atmospheric collapse as well. It's furthest outward in the galactic center's direction, taking the sheet, and the stars we'd expect to show signs before the sheet got here, indeed, have gone off in appropriate order. This information was largely known for the last 50 to 70 years and was intentionally diverted and covered up, 